all right we are back again and a viewer of my video requested a feature to implement a checkbox to select all the records of the data table and i am here with that feature and what i want to implement here in this uh, session is that i uh, i want to show a checkbox here and when the user clicks on it then we'll be selecting all of the records that are displayed on this page and then show a message that you are currently selecting this number of items and do you want to select all and when the user clicks on select all then we want to select all of the records the total records from our data from our data table okay so we'll be implementing that in this session and if you are ready then let's get started so now let's go to our visual studio code and we have a checkbox here in our so this is the input type of checkbox and let's wire model this with a property which is which will we will be calling as select page which we haven't defined yet so let's go ahead and copy that and go to our students.php and define a property called select page which will be false by default and we'll be using the lifecycle property lifecycle hook of this select page so whenever this value updates then what we want to do is let's first die dump it so public updated select page and then we'll be receiving the value that is that will be either true or false and let's go ahead and die dump it die dump that value and now if you go ahead and reload our browser and I, uh, if i go ahead and select this box then we should see a die dump value of true and that didn't work why that didn't work select page okay i didn't save this i need to save that now reload our browser and we should see that okay so we get a value of true and when unselected we get a value of false so now let's go to our students.php and since we have the select page then what i want to do here is if the value is true then i want to execute a query and if the value is false then i want to assign the checked array to an empty array that is we don't want we want to empty all of the records that are checked and if the value is true then what i want to do here is i want to select all of the records that are displayed on this page okay so these all of these 10 records should be selected when i click on this button so how do we do that so for that what we need to do is we need to we need to define a computer property so the way we define a computer property is by calling a function okay it's by defining a function so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna extract this all queries the student query that we are uh, the query that uh, which we are using to get all the students and along with the paginate i'm just gonna cut this part and then define a computer property for this query so public function get students property okay and it needs to return this query so save that and so this is the computer property and we'll be calling this by the students name here so get and the property are the convention naming convention for the computer property and what we can now do is we can directly call this students and everything should work as usual since we are using the computer property okay so everything is working fine and the pagination and the filtration on uh, filtering um, property and all everything is working fine and now what we can do is if the value is checked then what i want to do is i want to assign the checked array to this students and i want to pluck the id from that collection so this is going to give an error since we are since this is this will return a collection so this student is a query builder and then we are plucking the id so this is going to return a collection 
laravel collection but we are assigning it to an to an array and we are also using this array in our is checked method here so we are checking whether in our array we have this id and then passing the array here so this is the type of array and we are assigning it to a collection here so this will give an error so let's go ahead and check that error what kind of error do we get here and then we'll be fixing it later so if i click on select all then i get an error that in array expects parameter to be an array and given is object so what it basically did was it went to it executed this function so it, it is checked uh, function is executed and it checks whether in array we have student id and this has to be an array but now this became a collection and that's why it gave an error so in order to change that collection to an array what we need to do is we need to map each of the item and we need to pass the function first so we need to pass a function and map each of the item to a type of string okay first what we can do is we can let's just do one thing let's convert that to an array we can directly convert that to an array so since we are plugging the id and to array will generally convert this collection to an array so this will work when we select all of the items but we'll get another error uh, that i'll be showing you what type of error do we get so if i click on select all then all of the 10, re 10 records that are displayed here are checked but if i try to uncheck any one of these then we get an unusual behavior as you can see we can't select unselect any of these so in order to fix it fix this error what we need to do is we need to map each of the value and in order to map it what we need to do is we need to pass a function and we want to map each of the item to a type of string so now what uh, so this function is basically doing is each of the ids from our students array will be mapped to a type of string okay and then we finally convert that to an array so let's save that and let's go ahead and reload our browser and now if i click on this select box then all of the items are uh, displayed on this page are now selected and if i click on any one of these items then we get the usual behavior that's which that actually should be like and our error is now solved and what i also want to do is whenever i uncheck any one of these boxes then what i want to do is i want to disable this button as well so in order to do that we need to define one more function that is updated checked so whenever the checked array is updated then what i want to do is i want to assign the select page value to false okay so whenever the checked array is updated then i want to assign the select page value to false so now again we go ahead and reload our browser and if i select all of the checkboxes are selected and if i click on this checkbox then this should be disabled okay and yes everything is working as expected and the next step that i want to do here is whenever i select this checkbox then i want to show a message here that you have selected this many items and do you want to select all and show a button here and when the user clicks on select all then i want to i want to select all of the records that we are fetching from our database okay so let's go ahead and implement that as well so first step let's define a message here that is you have selected this many items and we want to implement that in our students.blade.php and i'll be displaying that message here so let's define a div with a class of call md10 okay and now let's define a message you have selected so first i'll define the markup and then we'll be looking at the logic of how we can implement this 
so you have selected 10 items do you want to select all and let's also define one more that is let's say we have 500 items and we want to show the question mark at the end and let's also define a href tag here select all and let's give it a class of margin left of two okay so now this message should be displayed here and now again let's go ahead and reload our browser and we see that we have this displayed here again let's also define a margin bottom of two and everything should work uh, everything should look good here so if i select this checkbox then i want to display this message and when i click on select all then i want to hide this button and also select all of the items that we are fetching from our database okay so let's go ahead and define work on the logic so i want to display this message when our select page property is true okay so if this property is true then i want to display this message so let's go ahead and define the logic so if select page is true then i want to execute i want to show this message so reload our browser and when i so now it is not visible if i click on this then we see a message that you have selected 10 items do you want to select all and now when i click on select all then i want to show another message that you have selected this many items and also hide this button here so the way we can do that is by okay let's define this inside another div let's save that and let's define one more property in our students.php that is select all so this value will be true when the user clicks on select all so all the values are selected so it indicates that all of the records of our database of our tables are selected and not only this current page okay so when the user clicks on select all then i want to set the value of select all to true okay so we have a function so we have a link here and let's define the wire equal to then i want to execute a function called select all so we haven't defined this property yet so let's go ahead and define that here so function and then select all then what i want to do here is i want to set this select all to true and okay and i want to display this message if the select all value is not true okay so i'll just define that later what i want to do is i'll just copy this part and when the select all value is true then i want to show another message that is you have selected all maybe 500 items and then i don't want to show this message okay so this should work fine so now i want to show this message if select all property is true and i want to show this message if select all property is false so we can keep that here and if select all property is true then i want to show this message otherwise i want to show this message so i hope you understand the logic here so if select all property is set to true then we are will be displaying displaying this message and if that is false then we'll be displaying this message and we have another parent if condition here so this all, all this all of the message all of this message this whole will div will be displayed if only the select page property is true so now 
let's go ahead and reload our browser and we haven't okay we have already defined the logic here so we have a function so we have defined the wire click select all and when this function is executed then we set the select all value to true okay so we have that so now let's go ahead and reload our browser and if i click on this checkbox then we see a message that you have selected 10 items do you want to select all 500 okay so the logic here is currently the select page value is set to true and select all is set to false and so if select page is set to true then we see this div and select all is set to false uh, that means this function is not executed so this message is displayed here and now if we click on this select all function then in return what is going to do is it, it will go and execute this function and what it is going to do is it will set the select all value to true so when this select all value is set to true then this function this condition will be true and will we should see this message okay so when i click on select all then we see that we have you have selected all 500 items okay so the logic of displaying the message depending on the user interaction is now working fine and what i want to do here is you have selected okay i want to show a show the count of the checked array here and do you want to select all and this value will be the students total value so this is the pagination property we get with the laravel so since we are paginating the records this will show the count of the records that we are fetching from the database okay so let's go ahead and again check it once more so if i select this then we see that you have selected 10 items do you want to select all 38 and then we see a message that if i click on select all then you have selected all 500 items so i need to change that as well so i can just copy this and paste that here so this should work fine and one last step that we need to do is when we click on select all so when we click on select all then what i want to do is i want to select all of the items that we are querying from the database and not only this page but all of the pages as you can see here we are only selecting 10 items from this page and if i go and check the next page then we don't have that we don't have the record selected so when the user clicks on select all then we should select all of the values so basically what we will be doing here is we'll be setting the checked array we'll be putting all of the ids in our checked array so we'll be setting the assigning our checked array with all of the records from our database so how do we do that so in order to implement that what we need to do is we need to once again since we are paginating this property here so it is basically uh, fetching 10 records at a time so by default it is uh, fetching 10 records at a time so since we are paginating it we need to what we need to do is we need to separate out our query into another computer property so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut this part and define one more function here that will be okay let's define that here the function get students query property so this should be property and what we want to do here is we want to return this query so before the pagination so this is actually in the form of uh, the query builder here so we are not paginating this results so these are all the records that we are fetching from the database before the pagination actually is done here so now when the when we call the get students property then we will be paginating the results so return students query and then paginate the results okay we need to assign this students query and then we should paginate it okay now everything should work as before as you can see it is working as expected and if i select all then we get all the selected items and when, when i click on select all then we have selected 38 items so now what we can do is since we have separated our query into another get property 
now what we could do is when i click on okay where's that function so when i click on select all then what we are doing here is we are selecting all of the uh, then we are assigning the select all property to true and then we also want to assign our checked array to all of the ids from our database so now what we can do is we can actually call this property here so get students query property so this is returning all of the records before the pagination is actually happening so this is recording all of the records from our database before the pagination occurs so after this so the get students property is actually paginating, paginating the record results but the students query property is only building the query here without performing the pagination so what i can do here is i can assign this students query and then like we did here in our so like we since we are assigning the checked array to the get this students and then plugging the id then i can actually copy this whole part and then assign it here so we are accessing the students query computer property and then plugging the id and then mapping each of the id from the students query to a string and then converting that to an array so i hope you understand the logic here we have only separated the query into two parts one is the get students property and another is get students query property so query property will be returning all of the students from our database without the pagination the students is only uh, is gonna return the students query along with the pagination okay so we are assigning the pagination later and when the user clicks on the select page so when the select page value changes and if that value is true then we are assigning the checked array to the students uh, computer property and not the students query computer property so this is returning the paginated results and when the user clicks on select all then what we are doing is we are assigning the checked array to the students query so this is without the pagination and then we are performing the plucking the ids and then mapping each function to a, each item to a string and then converting that to an array so the reason we are converting that to an array is because since we are checking here whether in our array we have this student id so in in array expects parameter first to be a key and then the second so in array expects parameter first to be a value of the array and the second parameter has to be an array so this has to be an array and that's why we are converting our checked property to an array here so the reason behind that uh, conversion is to convert that to an array so this has to be an array okay so our logic everything is working fine here so now let's go ahead and try it once more so when i click on select all then i see a message that you have selected 10 items do you want to select all 38 and when i click on select all then we can see that we have i uh, you have selected all 38 items and we also can see that we have an array of which check 38 and we have the message delete and export so now we can delete all of the items or we can also export all of the items and yes that's how we can actually implement uh, uh selecting multiple items assigning the selecting all of the items from our data table or uh, selecting only a part of the items from the database and we can also do what we can also do is since we are querying the results after the page uh, along with the search results here so as you can see here so student with the class and section and when this selected class is true then we are running this query and when this selected section is true then we are running this query and then also performing the search here so now if i go ahead and okay let's filter it instead of searching so i want to filter it by section a and now we have these values here okay we don't get any value of class 2 so we are filtering them by class 1 and as you can see we can we can we see that we have multiple results here so since we are getting 18 results now if i go ahead and select this then we are selecting only 10 items and do you want to select all 18 yes then we are currently selecting 18 items and we can also double check that 
and now what i want to do is i want to delete all of these so if i go ahead and delete it then we shouldn't, we shouldn't see uh, any record from class one in our data table so all of the values from the class one should be deleted so let's go ahead and delete it and all of these values were deleted so once the uh, these values are deleted then what i want to do is i want to assign the, this uh, the select all property to false and then also select page property to false okay so this is the final thing that we want to do here so when we assign the this checked to an empty array then what i want to do is i also want to set the select all property to false and i also want to set the select page property to false as well so again let's go ahead and reload our browser and everything should work okay we only have class 2 section a and b so now if i go ahead and filter it by class 2 section a we don't get any results okay we are getting going to page 2 so class 2 section a okay so since we are getting the uh, 10 records here so if i go ahead and select all and you are currently selecting 10 items do you want to select all 10 okay that's fine select all then you are you, have, you are currently selecting all 10 items now if i go ahead and delete that and we should see this message disappear and this all this checkbox should also be disabled okay so if i click on okay then selected records are deleted successfully and since we have the applied filter here so now if i go ahead and revert back then we see all of these records so our pagination filter, filtering property and bulk delete everything is working so i hope that you like the video and okay one more thing that i want to show here is when i click on these values so we have a small bug here so if i am selecting multiple values here and while the user is selecting all of these four records what if they go ahead and delete a single item from here so when the user clicks on ok then notice the bug here since we are selecting four items and when i click on this then what's actually happening is we are currently selecting three items but we see a message we see the count of four here so that's a small bug which i want to fix here so we actually have multiple solutions for this problem so one of the solutions could be when the user is selecting the multiple items from here so when the user selects these checkboxes then what we could do is we could actually hide this delete button so let's go ahead and do that so we have in our students.php blade.php we are deleting that button here okay so what i want to do here is if the checked arrays set okay if the checked array is not set then i want to show this button otherwise i want to hide that so if this is not so if this is null then we'll be showing that and if it if, if it uh, consists of only a single value or more than that then uh, then i want to hide this button okay so if we go ahead and reload our browser and when i click on select then our button gets disappeared so this is one of the way that we can implement this so this way the user cannot delete the items and we won't see that error and when i unselect any of any all of these then we see that button again so this is one of the ways and the other way that we can implement this is by going to our students.php and since we are deleting uh, when we when we delete a single record from the database then what i want to what i want to do is i want to delete that id from our checked array as well so that could be another solution for this so let's go ahead and do that and the way we can do that is by defining is by calling a function called array diff and i also checked that on the internet i didn't knew 
about this syntax here so i just opened up stack overflow and so array without the strawberries value will be array div and this takes the array and another value with an array of the key that we want to delete okay so we should pass here this checked and another array with the value of our students id so since we are deleting this student id so since we are deleting the record from our data uh, since we are deleting this student's id id's record from our database so when we delete this record then what i want to do is i want to remove that id from our checked array as well okay so and we the way we can do that is by calling this function array diff and this takes the first parameter as the array itself from where we want to remove and the value that we want to remove so we are actually specifying the student id that we want to remove and that's and this result get gets assigned to our this checked array okay so this should work so let's go ahead and reload our browser and now if i select multiple items here so now multiple items and we have we checked with the value of four and when i delete a single record then we should see the value of this to be increased by one okay so i click on okay then as you can see the which checked array consists of three items only and that's how we fix the error anything else we don't have anything else i think okay so in this tutorial series we implemented uh, multiple features that we could implement on a data table like the pagination feature the filtering feature uh, multi-level filter filtering like filtering by class filtering by section so we you can actually implement this functionality on multiple other use cases as well searching the tables so searching through multiple columns and searching through relations deleting single records deleting multiple records and exporting the data to an excel file using the package laravel excel and also deleting these records and a bunch of features so it was a very lengthy series or as you can see we implement uh, implemented quite a lot of features which you don't really find on the internet and i hope you like the content and if you do like it then like the video and do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon uh, to stay subscribed for the future releases so i'll be also be posting some more uh, tutorials related to livewire and also maybe i'll also be posting some real projects using livewire in the future so stay tuned for that and have a great day and i'll see you in the next one